Hi everybody, welcome. I'm gonna let folks join on live. Today, we're gonna be talking about resource guarding, specifically resource guarding towards humans. So I'm not really gonna touch, uh, I hear her, uh, not really gonna touch resource guarding that is dog directed. The Prince of Darkness is here with me. And we're just gonna hang out for a bit. Um, I've ordered some food that should get here in like half an hour. So we've got to make this half an hour. <laughs> if you have questions about resource guarding towards humans only, put them in the chat. Um, and I'm gonna be talking today just about what resource guarding is, what it might look like, um, and a little bit about how I might go about resource guarding cases. Um, but before I go into anything, please, if you are seeing any signs of resource guarding from your dogs, speak to a professional. <laughs> this live is by no means a replacement for uh, a, a, an actual consultation with a professional. So whenever we're seeing aggression, whenever we're seeing fear, you need to speak to somebody who is actually qualified, who uses science-based training methods that are minimally aversive. So please <laughs> and if i show any videos today which i think i will show some videos of me training um please do not ever try and repeat anything that you see on here um i thought you were gonna say i've ordered some food so we can practice on live lol that's funny no my dogs oh. my dogs won't um won't, would not resource wouldn't resource guard in that in that context so um that wouldn't work <laughs> and also definitely not safe um so instead, I'm going to show you some videos of um, some cases that I've worked in the past. Uh, so let's jump in and, um, oh, hi, Kimberly. Lovely to see everybody. Thank you for joining today. So we've got a nice little bunch of folks in. It's so nice to see you all. I really appreciate you being here. Um, so let's crack on um, and talk about resource guarding a little bit. So um, I'm going to be, I've got some an, out, an outline here that I might refer back to. If you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. Uh, so what is uh, what is resource related aggression or like resource guarding? Um, uh, it's the use uh, of avoidance or threatening or aggressive behavior uh, by a dog to maintain control of a food or non-food item um, in the presence of another person or animal. So basically like avoidant or agonistic behavior displayed around a resource, behind, around a perceived resource. The, the function of a, of a resource guarding, as we call it, um, we'll talk about the behaviors, it's to increase the distance between the resource and the thing that's approaching, right? So um, I have a big slice of pizza and I'm eating it and my brother comes up and this is a real story, he implements a 30% tax on my food where he tries to take 30%, maybe it's 25%, anyway, it doesn't matter, it's still sh sh shit, um, tries to take a tax of my food, so he'll try and reach for the pizza and I smack his hand away. The goal of that behavior is to get him to piss off and it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> but for most dogs, that really does work, right? Um, so you can see why they do it. Um, I'm not gonna go too into depth about the different categories and intensities of behavior. Um, I think maybe we'll just talk about what sort of things dogs might guard first and let me know in the chat if you've um, experienced this with your dog um, and Emily here says this has started with my puppy where she was growling with her chew um, so uh, when you were reaching for her chew she was growling and that is one of the main things that that dogs will growl is it, uh, will growl will guard is food food items so that could be like a bowl of food it could be a piece of food they picked up off the floor it could be a chew or something like that uh, we might uh, see dogs guarding um, humans uh, toys um other dogs smells water novel items is a really big one i'm just gonna have a little look and see what folks are, are saying here about their dogs if you're mentioning anything um so novel items i find is a really big one sorry papa you don't have to lick there leave it please sorry he's got licking his paws because uh, we just had a walk in the outside but if he does that it's not good for him anyway back to stay on task krishma um, so all sorts of things. They might also guard like, um, like I say space, like a room, a bed, a couch. Um, I have a client who's the dog guards the comfortable window seat in the sun, um, or, you know, so whatever the animal finds valuable, essentially, um, that really can be anything. 
<laughs> um, anything that the dog uh, is that's important to the dog. Um, behaviors that we might see are the dog trying to take the item away and hide. Uh, they uh, might uh, uh, sort of change the way that they're breathing, maybe faster or holding their breath. Um, they might body block, so put themselves in between us and the resource. My dog does this, Hera does this with other dogs. He'll put himself in between the thing um, and the dog. Uh, we might see them uh, look uh, sort of freezing over the item whilst looking up and giving us direct eye contact. And you can see, often see the whites of their eyes and the stare is very piercing and still. We call this a hard stare. Um, we might, yeah, like the whites of your eyes, the whale eye as well. Uh, we have to see a lot of tension. So that can look like body tension, facial tension, pilo erection, where the hair stands up on the back of their neck because of the tension of the muscles. Um, just like a lot of things. <laughs> um, so I could probably go on, um, but uh, let me uh, let me see what, we, what we've got here. Yeah, we've got, um, obviously that the behavior can escalate, right? Uh, if those low level responses are not listened to, we then see things like growling, lip curling, um, maybe barking, snapping, lunging, and then right at the end, we'll see biting um, uh, as, a, as a behavior that's often associated with resource guarding. Um, so you had some of those early signs, um, uh, what it might look like, and we've seen what the, um, what the uh, the triggers might be and it's usually like people approaching them with those triggers um that is usually the way that that looks um you know some animal a is a human is approaching dog in the bed human is approaching dog with food um but sometimes dogs will proactively aggress in order to gain access over a resource that is less common from my experience but definitely something that we see why we kind of touched upon it um it is uh to meet uh, a need they have a need to control the resources this is quite normal it is a natural and normal dog behavior all dogs have the potential to guard items just like all humans have the potential to guard items and i've been making this analogy for a long time now um but um like the pandemic right how when we were there we were all stressed about and, and uncertain about our future every, we kind of had a habit of, of, of hoarding and guarding items like toilet roll and hand sanitizer it can it's the same any animal can guard a resource especially if there are other factors impacting their overall stress level so i think we need to just acknowledge as a species that it's normal um we cannot expect our dogs to just give up everything to us automatically that is kind of crazy um and um just like a really un, un un unreasonable request of any animal so um i think that's definitely a hangover from you know a, a period of time where we expected dogs to submit to us as their kind of majestic overlords but uh, uh you know luckily we're in a, a brighter brighter times and we know that <laughs> it's maybe actually not the reality of the situation so um <laughs> those are the things you might be seeing they're uh, meeting that need it's perfectly normal however not something that we love and not something that we want to maintain uh, we need to change that right for safety and well-being um i guess one last question that i think to, to cover before we go into like solutions um is uh kind of why like why are these dogs guard and that's a question i get a lot um you know why does my dog fluffy guard but uh, Fido down the road doesn't care um, and uh, whenever we are talking about you know the why of the why of behavior why is an animal doing something um, we often use uh, this uh, I guess lens uh, by an ethologist called Kim Brophy we call it legs so we look at the animal's legs and legs stands for learning environment genetics and self so usually these dogs have a history of items being taken from them they have learned that um you know that the barking or the biting or the growling is the only thing that's going to work um so often that is something that kind of uh, makes a mild case uh significantly worse um they uh they, they learn that they, they have to take action or they'll lose their resource um uh, there might also be a history of just generally competition over food scarcity of resources etc 
um, environment can impact. So we might have a puppy with inappropriate management and there's just stuff everywhere, um, for example. Uh, so um, that could be problematic or, you know, I know lots of dogs that, that are not, I had lots of cases where dogs have started resource guarding because they live in a particularly messy part of, of Manhattan or Brooklyn, which is covered in pizza and chicken bones. And that's an environment, um, environment that really sets a dog up to fail, right? Um, also environmental stresses. So if the animal is in a chronic stress state, just like at the beginning of the pandemic, we were all were more likely to guard. Papa, you really can't lick that paw anymore. You're gonna give yourself an infection. Please stop. I'm gonna hold your pawsy, okay? I got you. Uh, genetic, sorry, I just like, I'm so used to wittering on about him in the background. Um, so we see, uh, you know, environment, learning take a, a, a big role. Genetics plays a strong component. And, uh, you know, the point, the self, the point at the, of, in their life that they're at. Um, are they in adolescence? Are they in pain and geriatric? Are they um, sick or unwell? Um, you know, these small things, they really affect behavior. And it's a, it's a holistic approach that you have to look at in all of these different areas. So we look to the legs of the animal to kind of figure out why is it that this animal is behaving this way? Um, let me have a little look and see uh, if I've seen any other questions or anything. My dog would guard uh, I, I don't know how to say that word. Is it cicadas? Um, I think they're little bugs, right? Um, and he saw them as his food. <laughs> He's like, back off, buddy. This is my pizza. Um, and again, it kind of, kind of makes sense, right? Uh, item that is interesting, my pup will guard, is my backpack from other dogs. Well, I imagine your backpack is full of treats, the water. Probably they maybe spend time in there. If that's a backpack that they go in, maybe they spend time in there. Um, but imagine, I imagine your backpack is probably full of all sorts of goodies. So through associative learning, the dog has learned that the backpack is very valuable. Um, I find this frequently where dogs will guard areas that are associated with value. So, um, you know, at the kitchen, for example, <laughs> um, or um, a cupboard where the treats are kept. So um, just shows how smart our dogs are, isn't it, that they can figure that out. Um, um, probably an unpopular question. Uh, puppy owner books. I'm going to ask to that later because I want to stick to topic. Um, we started with any time our pooch had a resource, we walked, up, walked by and dropped treats. Ah, well, German blue bear. Sounds like you're on the right track because we're going to talk about a little bit about that next. Um, and uh, the backpack is magical and wonderful. Yes, um, a hundred percent. Maisie the German Shepherd. My dog resource guards me from other dogs. Yeah, that's normal. We're, we're talking about human resource guarding today, like dogs guarding against human beings. But I will do one about dogs later on. Um, yeah, Claire Allen says there are lots of chicken bones and other rubbish on the floor where we live. Very tricky to set the dog up for success. I really feel you, like, because sometimes, you know, those legs really go against you. Um, and in this case, the environment certainly is going to be playing a strong part in making it harder for your dog um, to be successful. And we're going to talk next about what we want to do um, to kind of resolve resource guarding cases. From my experience, every single resource guarding case can be resolved. Um, it can be resolved um, using a step-by-step -step plan, even extreme cases without the use, use of punishment, intimidation or coercion, just using science-based methods and intelligent uh, training plans. Um, but prevention, management, um, these sorts of things are going to be absolutely key. So um, let's dive into what that might look like. Management basically means we have to make sure that this is not happening over and over and over again, right? Like if you're going on your walks two, three, four times a day to potty and your dog is picking up chicken bones two, three, four times a day and they're snapping at you and you're having fist fights two, three, four times a day, that's not, that's not breaking a habit, is it? <laughs> Those neural pathways are just getting trodden again and again and again. So we need to be really smart. And before we do any training, Screw training, I don't care about training. I care about management more than anything else right now. So how are we going to manipulate the environment to eliminate the dog's need to resource guard? We need to stop them worrying 24 seven about maintaining access and control over their resources. It's super important that we make a large amount of effort in this area. So here are just some examples. I mean, first of all, we have to identify all the triggers. What is it, what's occurring? What are the triggers? When is this happening? We have to make a list, we have to keep a log. 
Um, we have to be really diligent about that. And then we might do a few things depending on the dog, right? Like I'm just gonna give you some examples. Um, all edible items are given in a confinement system or a safety zone. So like a pen that's set up really safe and the, and the dog can't get out of and we can teach the dog to go in and out and all that stuff. Um, or a crate or something like that. Uh, we might muzzle the dog on walks if they're picking up items and then, you know, biting you over trying to take it from them. Um, we might condition a comfortable, well-fitted basket muzzle. And again, all of this is done with trainer supervision. I'm going to just say that again for the second time <laughs> in case you just jumped on the live. Everything that I'm talking about today is just meant for educational purposes uh, to spread awareness about how we should be ethically treating these things. Uh, please do not use this as a training plan for your dog. Speak to a professional. I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. <laughs> um, because it's really important. Uh, this is, we're dealing with aggression. You can get really seriously hurt um, if we do it wrong. Uh, so we just might remove all guardable resources from the environment. So say, actually you mentioned walkies and wellness that your pup was guarding um, the backpack. So you prevent it by not putting your backpack down on the floor. Fantastic, what a brilliant idea. I used to teach puppy classes and sometimes where the puppy owners would want to sit on the floor while the puppies played. And me and Nicole, who would run the puppy classes together, uh, started noticing that actually lots of the dogs, because the the train, the, 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 the mums and the guardians had lots of high value food, they're starting to guard the, the laps of the, the owners. So we had everyone stand up, management, right? It's gonna, it's gonna stop the animal feeling the need to, to respond that way. Um, we could limit access to furniture or certain parts of the house using baby gates. Um, we could keep the dog on leash, you know, more, maybe indoors or when there are resources around or tethers. Um, basically, we're going to be just doing as much as we can to make the this. We want zero incidents of resource guarding, basically. <laughs> and we will log every incident that we, we have. Um, and then there are the two absolutely key things here, which is that we never increase pressure when a dog is showing any of the low level signs of resource guarding. So if we're seeing some of those low level signs like running away, if we're seeing the dog um, stop and freeze and stare at us, we never continue to approach. The minute that we see low level signs of resource guarding, we back off, we back off, we release the pressure. Um, think about those low level signs like smoke. And if we see the smoke, what do we do? We put out the fire immediately. We don't put more gas on the fire, right? We want to Put out, put out the fire. So definitely put out the fire <laughs> and be the smart uh, ad adult with the frontal lobe, the smart human. Um, <laughs> uh, the last thing I guess is that what do we do if our dogs do pick up something? Um, that's a big one. And if our dogs do pick up something, I'm gonna show you a quick video of how to work on that. Um, we do something called trading up. So we'll like toss some really high value foods in like a Hansel and Gretel style trail to pick it up. So this is a bully stick that it had gotten to the end and the, the, the puppy here, Spooky, could swallow it. Um, but he hadn't learned a drop, drop it cue that was that good yet. He was only a few months old. We'd really been focusing on other things. So the trainer, this is Nicole, she comes um, and she'll just drop a few, a few pieces of food um, to get the, that food from him. Uh, this is really showing our dogs that when we approach them with a high value, when, when they have a high value resource, uh, we're going to give them something better. If they're guarding like a bed or a couch, we might treat trail them off the bed or couch if necessary. Um, uh, so, um, so yeah, we're, we'll, we'll trade up all the time. We'll use our management and we'll trade up and we have to get to a zero zero incidences so if anyone's watching this you know you can immediately start implementing management with your resource guarding dog whilst you reach out to find a certified behavior consultant a trainer who is qualified to work in a, with aggression cases um in a in a, a, a science-based way um and i maybe i'll tell you a little bit about um the next steps which would be to um teach uh well i guess we we have like at 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 CCA, we have really holistic management plans. So we do the management to start off with. Then we'll do a whole bunch of other crap, a whole bunch of like holistic stuff. We look at nutrition. We look at how much rest they're getting. We look at relaxation. Um, what toys are they getting? Uh, enrichment, play, problem solving, um, body awareness and fitness. We, we kind of have a really holistic plan. So there's this whole layer that goes into this of just like looking at the dog holistically. Um, so we can't really, we can't really um, forget about that. And then 
<laughs> you see why I'm like, please talk to someone because it's complicated. And then we teach responsiveness and re reliability with cues that are going to teach them new ways to uh, respond to the triggering stimulus. Um, so what do we want them to do instead of guarding? Uh, and we have to change their conditioned emotional response in step by step ways. So you're going to do that with a professional. And I'm going to just show you a few examples that are not to be repeated um, without a use of a professional. <laughs> um, but uh, I do want to show you because, you know, talking about this all day is great, but giving you some visuals of what it might look like can also be good. Hi, Lauren. We're just finishing. I shouldn't be too long. Sorry. Oh, We're talking about resource guarding if you want to jump in. Love it. Um, so this is a video here of Hayes. Um, he's an adolescent hound. He's in New York and he's being given a chew here. Um, uh, and, uh, sorry, a, a Kong with frozen peanut, uh, frozen cream cheese. And what I'm going to start doing is uh, doing a game called Treat and Retreat. And this is something that we do with dogs that have resource guarding um, behaviors to change their associations, their conditioned emotional responses. So when we approach, instead of it being a bad thing, it actually is a good thing. This is my dog, like, what are you doing? Um, now, treat and retreat is done often with two layers of safety. So in this video, Hayes doesn't actually have any resource guarding issues. We're just, why not do this? It's always a good thing to do with dogs. Um, and I'm making a demo video, so I approach him and I toss a bunch of freeze-dried uh, beef at him. <laughs> April says, hey, Hera, hey, Hera says, hey, too. Um, and then backs off. So we treat and retreat. Um, approach, treat, and retreat. Um, again, do not do this at home. <laughs> Please speak to a trainer. This is just an example. Um, so you can see how we work with this, because I think it's important that people see. Um, so approaching, uh, feeding and retreating uh, to build positive associations um, and uh, practicing here a little bit of trading up uh, and then just giving the resource right back. So this is some really nice preventative work that I'm doing with Hayes, but it's just intended as an example to show you that treat and retreat method. So uh, that's what sort of the first steps might look like um, for something like that. We'll uh, also teach um, solid go to place cues on a verbal cue and then wait till released with a bunch of distractions. So I have a dog that will guard a variety of, in my client um, private, private practice, who will guard a variety of things. And we constantly are working on her stationing behavior whilst the guardians go to cupboards, get the food bowl, do this, do that. Um, to teach her to stay in her place. And we do that without any punishments, just intelligently, slowly raising the criteria. Um, we'll teach a recall, a recall away from the from the resource is really important um, so that, you know, you can get them away to move away um, and uh, a get, get it, bring it, drop it, any sort of the, a combo of that sort of nature. So I'll show you an example here. Oh, I don't think I actually put this one on my phone, did I? Um, I don't have an example of the drop it. I can post that later in a reel maybe, but I can show you another piece of the puzzle with especially with dogs that are very sensitive to um, hands reaching for items, for food items. This is a kind of example of, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put the sound on, um, of a dog that is uh, has multiple uh, level three and, and above actually bites over resources. And I'm working with her on her looking away or offering any sort of um, deferential calm, appeasement, uh, any sort of nice <laughs> behavior um, as I reach for this item. Um, and I've got her on a back tie, so she cannot, um, she cannot access me. And you can see she's a bit stressed. I'm actually working her, I think, quite, quite close to her threshold here, but I've been working with this dog at this point for over a year, and I knew her really, really well. So you'll see as we, we go through this video, the, the process that I'm going through. And uh, again, you can see no punishment are being used, um, a, a posit you know, like applications of punishment. So I reach for the, the the food. She doesn't really like that too much. And when she looks away, I mark yes and reinforce her. And I'm shaping for eye contact. I want her to look at me when my hand goes down to the food. And what I'm teaching her is that when I reach for this resource, if you look at me, you're gonna get something even better. And it's so worthwhile for you to change your habits 
because it's gonna really pay. <laughs> and we're building new neural pathways. We're showing Pancake uh, that when I reach for this item, here my hand goes down, if she looks away, yes, and even tastier treats come her way. So we can do this in a variety of different ways. We're basically making the, the stimulus of me reaching for the, for the resource a cue for her to look away. And then she actually looks at me at this point because she's like, oh, okay, I'm figuring this out. Um, so very, very, my favorite way to treat any sort of aggression is to make the, the, the trigger a cue for the animal to perform an alternate behavior. So as my hand reaches for that, she is going to look at me, um, I think. Yeah. And then she gets a reinforcer. And I think I even give her the resource. I'm like, look, we just play our fun little game. You get a bunch of beef and then you get your bloody chew pancake. Me reaching for your stuff is awesome. Um, so we're basically just teaching her a new way of um, dealing with her need to control the resource. Um, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm going to get it. Um, so uh, anything wrong with keeping the look away as the target behavior here? Great question. Um, personally, I like a confident dog. I like a dog that like shows like confident body language that is soft so my ideal target behavior is soft eye contact so like slightly squinty soft eye contact with a relaxed face I don't want like <laughs> like the fuck eye like I want like a nice like please behavior that usually indicates <laughs> sorry is that not right <laughs> that in the Lauren's like oh, I just love the squinty fuck eye <laughs> yeah Lauren's cracking up in the corner um so um yeah it's pretty cool isn't it to see her literally figuring that out because at the beginning she gets uncomfortable and she's staring at my hands and she's going i flip and hate that you're reaching for that i uh, shall you see it again so that you can see we can like have one more little look and then we'll finish because i want to eat um so uh the face is a brilliant oh god i don't i'm gonna watch it back later and be like what are you doing so let's just show it again. So I'm reaching for this item and look at her. She hates it. She's like, I don't like this. And she looks away. And instead of attacking me, she looks away. And I go, what a fantastic decision and reinforce her. So this kind of general principle is how we'll address all resource guarding from, that's how I do it anyway. I'm sure there are many other ways you could do it, but this is, this is my preferred method. Do you want to come in for a proper cuddle? Well, I, okay. Um, She's a bit avoidant here, which shows that she's uncomfortable. She wants to get the food. You see how she pulls towards it a little bit. I'm really interested. And then she investigates the tether. She's like, screw this. I think she's doing a lot of sniffing because it's displacement signals. Her ears went back there a little bit, looking at the hand. And she goes like, oh my God, oh. And she looks away and I give her food. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, and after a few repetitions of that, I heard it, I heard it. Um, you get the kind of like um, aha moment where she looks at me. Um, and when she looks at me, she doesn't look at me with like a tough face. She has like really soft musculature in her face. Um, so the hand is reaching. Uh, that's the last look away she does. The next one, I think she actually looks at me. Um, so reaching for the resource. And then she'll able, she's able to give me that eye contact, which is soft with her ears, nicely positioned, quite neutrally, um, not, not back, not too forward. Um, and she's allowed to lay down. Can you just see for a second that that mat has pancakes on it and her name is Pancake? It's her pancake mat. Um, this training session with P lasted probably too long. <laughs> um, uh, this training session was actually from like four years ago um, or five years ago when I was working in New York. Um, I would do things probably a little bit more refined now, um, but whatever, it's cute um, and we're not perfect. And I think I usually wouldn't do more than two or three minutes at a time with a dog maximum, but it really depends. Sometimes I'll do 10 seconds and that's it, you know. Um, so it really does depend on the on the animal, but I like to keep it really short because we're dealing with real feelings, right? Like these are like real feelings. You guys wanna see here? Here he is. Um, anyway, so those are some of the things we'll do. Resource guarding is normal. Don't yell at the dog. Um, question. Oh, question from Lauren. 
for a lot of my clients mm. in London, mm. chicken bones on the street are very, very hot items that mm. their dogs use, usually uh. munch down. And often I, I begin by teaching a leave it, but I'm interested to see what you would say around this when your dog already has kind of gobbled the chicken bone because often if you were to go grab for it, you would be making it worse because then they're more likely to swallow it whole. Oh yeah, yeah, we talked about management about around like that kind of stuff and I would teach just muzzle train the dog and walk it on a basket muzzle while we teach a solid leave it and I think that's the most important thing because like we, we have like places in London and New York where it's just like every bloody block there'll be a chicken bone or a slice of pizza or glass um and i'm not you're not able to train 24 7 it's not reasonable or fair on you or your dog so the basket muzzle is actually often the safest and most ethical option for the short term for the short term and then you stop that cycle and then you're able to actually teach a solid leave it which is totally possible please see previous reel of my dog leaving a bag of meat uh, for evidence i did set that up as a <laughs> you can talk about your bag of meat. oh you talked about the bag of meat yeah I, I actually found a bag of meat on the street it was crazy um what examples do you have for dogs that resource guard their human yeah absolutely so in that case say the dog was resource guarding the human against another person fundamentally to start off with is there any issues with that dog with strangers because we got to address that first if there's if it's scared of people then that's different and I often do see that that's a, an underlying facet in these cases so we just th- that whole thing first and then secondly we do the exact same thing but instead of reaching for the chicken bone you're reaching for the human being so say for example um you know I reach for um say Hera guards my imaginary girlfriend I hug my imaginary girlfriend and then I say yes and I give Hera the food just like I was doing with pancake but we might break it up like I've literally started off with people just like touching a shoulder or looking at the person so just like with pancake I didn't just like put the chew in her mouth and take it out of her mouth I started at a distance right we'll do the same thing and we just teach the dog that when the triggering stimulus is applied they should do x usually it's just look at the person look at their human or go to a bed or whatever but it yeah that'll that'll be what it looks like and again you'll have to really please speak to a trainer to get like properly coached and how to do this do not just go around hugging people throwing chicken around that's messy um yeah because it's all really like it has to be done in the right way otherwise the animal gets confused you can make it so much worse i did get some questions and i put them on my computer but my computer's died and i can't bother to turn it on and i've this life has gone on for ages so we'll finish it here here but it was really nice to um chat with you all um april says we do two minutes and wasn't sure if it was too short no man i love the short sessions short and frequent i used to be and still can be such a pusher Just that one last rep, you know, it feels good, doesn't it? But it's not actually going to benefit us in the long run. Um, All right, I'm going to head off and eat. I'm hungry. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for joining. There were so many people here. It was so nice to have you all. Oh, lots of hearts. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you soon. Bye.